first of all, like, uh, should we say who Neera Tandon is? She's like the director of the Center for American Progress, right? Is that yes. her official title? Okay, so she's the head of, or she's like a, a, one of the top positions and probably, probably the most influential like liberal think tank in Washington. You think that's fair to say? Like outside the Brookings Institute, maybe? Yeah, I mean, the president of the Center for American Progress. That's I guess if the Brookings are if Brookings is like the the uh, Gambino family because they have all that strong Qatari money, which is like the heroin <laughs> trade money. Uh, the CAP, which near is the president of the Capo de Tutti Capo, is uh, yeah, they're the Genoveses. Okay, so. Uh, Again, Matt called her a scumbag, and uh, Matt Brunig, that is, not our, uh, Matt, our own Matt Chrisman, I'm sure, has called her worse. To avoid but... <laughs> confusion, for the purposes of the rest of the podcast, I will be going by Cush. Okay. So if you hear Matt referring to Brunig, not me. <laughs> All right. So, so uh, again, uh, Felix alluded to this, but, uh, okay, this is the person that he called a scumbag. Now, I want to just read from this email that uh, came out. This is back in 2011, and this was uh, from Nira. Uh, subject line, re, should Libya pay us back? Great fucking subject line for an email. Uh, here's, what, here's what Nira wrote. We have a giant deficit. They have a lot of oil. Most Americans would choose not to engage in the world because of that deficit. If we want to continue to engage in the world, gestures like having oil-rich countries pay us back doesn't seem crazy to me. Do we prefer, I'm sorry, do we prefer cuts to Head Start or WIC or Medicaid? Because we live in deficit politics, and that's what is happening and will be happening even more. Uh, so what I got to say to that email from Nira is... Um, we're going to build the biggest invasion of Libya. It's going to be beautiful, a fabulous invasion, and we're going to make the Libyans pay for it. It's going to be classy. It's going to be wonderful. They're going to pay us back. We're not president. God, America's, yes. America's going to be strong. We're not just going to not spend money on bombs. We're going to get 10 times what we spent on the bombs back in oil money. Yeah, I believe it was uh, Chaz Bader on Twitter pointed out that there's like everything wrong with contemporary democratic politics is encapsulated in that. Not just the breathtakingly awful uh, suggestion of making these people pay for their own bombing uh, and using the just chilling Orwellian language of engage with the world to mean bomb the fuck out of places. Even the fucking British Empire at the height of their debauchery when they were starving millions of Indians to death and laughing about it. They didn't call that shit engaging with the fucking world. But worse than all that is that she's also endorsing the idiot uh, consensus wisdom of Washington that there's this zero sum game in terms of the budget because the deficit is this real thing that we have to be very concerned about at all times. And no, like yeah, it 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 it, it seeds the idea about like you know uh, that there's a deficit crisis and we need Libyan oil money to help us pay back like for WIC or Head Start or whatever. Like there's not enough fucking money in this country to do that. And like actually, when I read this email again, it totally reminded me of our conversation with Derek last week because like, what did he say about the blob? Like he said that like the number one trait about the blob is the the unvarnished belief in the positive like force of the u.s military to engage with the world as nira says yeah, and also i want to point out like this is yeah this is everything that people fucking hate about the democratic party uh we included the evil the fucking corporate sensitivity training language but also it's fucking dumb what government of libya is near a saying that we should get this from one of the six competing factions that was that were at war with each other at the time <laughs> and also yeah. how does that work do you just show up and go well the oil is ours now like, <laughs> you can't do that without a fucking ground invasion like it just, the, bomb it, the oil and take the oil that's what yeah. i say you bomb the oil and you take the oil <laughs> So, yeah, like, I mean, this is the new model of, like, uh, humanitarian intervention. Like, when you find the humanitarian crisis, you intervene, and then, like, you, you make your uh, client state um, just pay you back with all of their resources that are now yours. <laughs> For that whole crowd of, like, you know, Clinton supporters, for them, it's become this whole thing about how you know, they're being harassed and Matt Brunig has been like at the center of this vortex because, you know, he calls them out and then all of his followers, you know, uh, harass and intimidate them or whatever. And what I have to say to that is like, look, 
it, it, look, if you're a woman online, like chances are you have to deal with a lot of shit that guys don't that are that is at best annoying and at worst frightening. So like, I'm not going to deny that, but what I will deny, or, or at least what I will say is I would take these arguments from these particular people, um, more serious if they just didn't display the utmost cynicism and how they invoke it. And by that, I mean, like, it's not just that they, um, dismiss any criticism of them that comes from people who aren't white men. It's that they don't acknowledge it at all. They just outright, like it just it, like they pretend it's not even there when it very clearly is. Uh, because there's basically two groups of people who are responding to this whole controversy in in some sort of outrage. And on the one end, you have this very cynical group at the top that we've been talking about who are totally just using uh, this language of oppression to mask the fact that they're defending an essentially reactionary agenda for the ostensibly leftist party in America, and people are not happy about that. And so they want to they want to confuse the issue and they want to they want to distract from that. That's their agenda. And so that's why they're going to push that narrative. But a lot of people are going to buy it for the simple reason that they don't want to confront for a number of reasons the terrifying reality that the fucking internet is just a giant shit tornado with a, a just this mass of totally uncontrollable, unknowable people. You have no idea who anybody is. They can do whatever the fuck they want. And this narrative of these directed attacks where Matt Brunning has like 500 alts and then 600 minions directing attacks at these people, there's something comforting about that because if you can like cut the head off of the snake, it'll die and then maybe you can have peace in the kingdom. When the sad and terrifying reality is, is that there's a bunch of broke-brained morons and fucking schizoids online who you have no control over. And that reality is too scary. And so people cleave to this narrative and, of, of, these, of these masterminds that just has no basis in reality. And I also thought it was really interesting in our uh, discussion with uh, Taibi is that he said he's heard from people like in Washington uh, that this is absolutely a planned strategy on the part of the Clinton campaign to portray Bernie Sanders and his supporters as sexist, racist, unhinged, you know, uh, which is exactly what they're doing. Right. Uh, and, you know, Matt just brought up the point that they're selling a story. Uh, Bernie Sanders is one probably a bigger proportion of votes from Arab Americans out of anyone who has ever run for president. I would think that's safe to say. Um, you know, look, I have some problems with Bernie's foreign policy. A lot of people like me do. I, he's talked about continuing the use of drones. He likes our, our great allies in Qatar and Saudi Arabia and Jordan. But he's just so much less hawkish than Hillary Clinton and the real narrative here is, I guess, that people don't like it when you, like Hillary Clinton, have a history of killing their relatives overseas. But that is just, that's totally ignored. Arabs are not people of color. Muslims are not people of color. And it's not that there's any special animus that your Joan Walsh is. I might, I might, actually, I, tanned in well, I, your, I, I might quibble on that point about Neera Tandin. Do you want to talk about uh, what she said about Modi? Oh, yeah, Neera Tandon. Neera Tandon did, she proudly She said met. it was a great honor to meet with Prime Minister Modi of, uh, by the way, the Prime Minister of India is an actual fascist who's political, like his political party has like uh, carried out actual pogroms against Muslims that killed like thousands of people in the region of India that he was in charge of. Right. Modi has led race riots that have killed thousands, uh, far more effectively than dangerous. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But, uh... You know, like Modi is an actual like evil person, like he's an actual fascist. And and Neera Tandon said it was a great honor to meet him, and, and he's an important part of the conversation about the economy or some bullshit like that. 